Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to episode 6 of the Wallace S. Bennett presidency for TNO USA episode 4. As you can see, if we call back from the, how you say, from the American presidential election, if you remember, we actually won against Wallace by a wide margin getting almost getting all of the Union states as well the added state added states of Oklahoma and Texas well we lost Alaska to the MPP but let's not worry about that besides it'll be a good, besides it'll be a good day for when Mr. Bennett comes into power However, I still need to make sure I deal with a lot of other, a lot of other foreign stuff like the uh, global conflicts, because I know that the. Let's see, I can't expand training missions. Let's see, provide economic aid. I still need to focus more on the. Uh... Ooh man, that gap is closing like crazy. Let's see. We'll get involved slightly in on that. Let's see. Band development programs. Let's see. Oh man, I can't even get any. I can't ship any armed equipment or anything. Well, I mean, would have been, would have been nice for TNO to actually add like a similar thing like with the base TNO, but I guess. Oh well, you live and learn. Not that I care or anything, but I really, really, really need all that stuff. Like, come on. We're running a military surplus of 1.75. Our GDP is slightly rising to, like, we're already almost to the $400 mark. Our debt to, our debt, our debt to GDP ratio is 55%, and our inflation is only by, is only stuck between for almost that, so yeah. Ah, here we go, a Christmas miracle! The Christmas season was nominally busy. Oh, Madras inaugurated as president of Mexico, for the revolution is eternal. All right, that makes sense. So Christmas miracle, call the press. We have some good news to share for once in our lives. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. Wait. Don't tell me, is my debug smooth on again? Because if it is, I swear to God. I always keep forgetting that. I kind of... I always figure it. You know what, next time when I do... Next time when I make a new episode, I'm going to make sure I click... I have my debug smooth off, just in case. Because, uh... Yeah, this is just getting ridiculous. And I don't know how I didn't even notice twice, like... All right, Senate election results are in. With the head, with the heady days of campaign ahead, the dust settles across the U.S. Votes have been tallied, close races called, victory and concession speeches given, posters are taken down, buttons stashed in drawers, and the population begins to return to a sense of normalcy. The incumbents have won their races, returned to their offices to get back to work, while those politicians that lost their races were declined to run the last, to run the last time, and making their plans to pack up their papers and staff to return back to their homes and civilian lives. Idealistic newcomers of every ideological stripe are still riding high on victory as they sort their affairs to make the moves to the state capitol or Washington. Those have lost return back to their old jobs and old lives, saddened and disappointed, but they will not serve, but nevertheless proud of what they did accomplish. What, while political machines of RDC and MPP are shut down to go into hibernation as the process of government governing the country resumes soon enough, they will be turned on again, and long, exhausting, exhilarating, exuberant election cycle will begin again. Candidates and voters, you have done America proud. And the polls are updated. Nice. Okay. 
I still find it so funny that we have a lot of hawkishness. Let's... Oh, I got the Ugly American Award namesake. Wow, that is funny. Ooh, the FLU went... The F... The F-U-L-N-A, Insurgency in Paraguay, defeated. Stability returns to Paraguay, peoples. Presidential election season is over. Hail to the chief, whoever it may be. The presidential elections and, their pre and the predictions will now be moved to the previous elections tab in the GUI. Alright, that makes sense. I mean, we already won as, Wal as, the as Wallace F. Bennett anyway, so... Let's reap the victory while, while we can. Hmm. A hard goodbye. Martial law in Indi in Indonesia. And what if the military can't hold out? Oh boy, seems like we're gonna be heading. Seems like Indonesia be heading for some trouble. The Unitary Republic of Indonesia. Oh boy, when failure benefits. Talk about a lucky feat. A hard goodbye. It was a hard conversation. But it had to be. Jacob just didn't expect her to be this stubborn, this unwavering about it. I don't get it. You're going to Germany of all places? They'll kill you! Jacob sighed. This was the first time he tried to explain to his mother, but she still wasn't, wouldn't get it. Mom, I told you before, I have a fake name and a fake identity. I'll be another Gentile American businessman looking to get rich off German money, she grimaced. But what if they find out? Will the new Fuhrer seem better, seem better than Hitler? He's still a Nazi. And what company business is so important that they're sending sending some Jewish employee to Germany of all places? Jacob tried to get a word in, but his mom continued her tirade. Aerospace stuff? It's all you'll tell me. I know Germany has the best engineers, but they're still Nazi. They're still National Socialists. Can't you ask your boss or whoever to get an, get an appointment somewhere else? Somewhere that they wouldn't want to kill you? Jacob shrugged, laughed internally at his mo mom's attack. At his mom's attempt to guilt him. I'm sorry, Ma, but this is what's happening. I'll try to write to you, and I promise I'll stay safe. His mother frowned and shook her head. I wish you... I just wish you could tell me what you were really doing over there. Jacob wished he really could. Oh, man, that is... That is just tough. Like, you... Re like, you really want to tell your mom what you're doing over there? But, like... Oh boy. The Macedonian quiet, the Balkans grow quieter. Ooh, so, ooh, so that means So that means our Zar our Zar lad Boris the Third actually quiet actually gave in to some concessions of Macedonia. Nice. The Sond the Sonder Gerich in Germany, in a bid to cleanse the NSDAP of disloyal members. Albert Speer, the fear of the German Reich, begun the Sonder Gerich. Um, I apologize if I did butcher that. A special trial which saw me several members of a party accused of a vi very greed of list of crimes, from abuse of power to accept bribes and even treason. As a result of this, several democratic countries have protested against what had appeared to be a purge in disguise, but this can't deter the government in Germania. After several months, Speer had achieved a double result. Not only has he tightened his grip on the party, but the German people are also much supportive of his regime. With the public opinion once more in his favor, the fear can now concentrate on more important matters. A leopard can't change its spots after all. Yep. I mean... Ah yes, the heating pot. We need to get a hand... We need to get a handle on this situation. There will be a rise in extremism. All voters will support the Progressive Caucuses over two weeks, as well as the Nationalist Caucus for two weeks as well. Well, that's a bummer, but alright then. Let's check on the foreign po- Nah, we ain't pulling out of Africa, fam. We ain't doing that. Busted! Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, what do we do? Asked the radio man, look, looked at his captain for confirmation. We, we could get none. He would get none as he was starting staring blankly from bridge- from the bridge at the Indonesian ship near their vessel. They're repeating. They're requesting, sir. Christ, uh, yes, allow them the board, stammered the Australian captain, sweating bullets, and tell the crew to make sure everything is hidden properly. The radio operator nodded and began relaying the orders. The crew scrambled out 
about and below deck to get their cargo secured and, secured and themselves to their posts should there be violence aboard. Violence Ab aboard the proper naval vessel loomed over the glorified scow. The Indonesian captain was having his own exchange with his crew. These Australians really thought they were pulling something off, flying an Indian flag, he said to the radio man shortly after, after terminating communications with the Indians. Well, you know what to do. More orders were exchanged, and fairly soon a small Indonesian boarding party was on the Australian deck. The Australians were un unarmed, making the Indonesian's job quite easy. That like a pack of coordinated hunters. They split up, they split up across the ship while two remained to keep the captives in check. Among them was the executive officer, who was sweeping through the decks with the result of his men. Sir, we found it, he declared. Found what? The Indonesian captain asked, despite knowing the answer, as he strode to the room room shout had originated from. Fairly soon he was in the galley where one of his men had sh shunted aside the ice box and opened a loose panel on the wall. He waved the exo over and he crouched down to examine a new exposed crate. They removed it from the wall and pried it open, and there they were. Firearms! O-F-N! Firearms! The officer patted the crewman on the shoulder. Tell the men to take the crew prisoner. Aw, oh, man. We wait for orders from Jakarta. Jap the Dai Nippon Taikoku gets, or shall I just say Imperial Japan, gets the event a question in escalation. Oh man, seems like we're getting busted for this one, boys. This ain't good for our image. Huh. Advanced jet bombers and all that jazz. Brian Wilson retires from touring. Hope Brian's coming back soon, though. Hmm. Reporters later reached out to Murray, Brian's father, who described Brian's decision as... Okay. Well, I mean, he's retiring from touring, but hey, that's fine by him. Ah, here we go. Balance the budget. Six Semper Tyrannis. We must maintain a 60% hawkishness for a period of 60 days. That'll be a piece of cake. Okay, our, uh, let's see, expand. Alright. Expanding the training missions. Nah, we ain't gonna pull out of Africa. I just do hope that I'm able to, like, actually keep the stability 50%. That's what I actually intend to do. So I'm gonna say, if we use low command if we spend low command power, that'd be a better idea. What's this? Oh, dang, that's, that's just crazy. The ugly American blinked and found himself in a, sitting in a small restaurant in the Tabari commune of Port-au-Prince. Around him was a quiet... Oh, dang. I'll do whatever the blank I want, he spat. Man, the feds are going to clean it up. Don't you forget it. He felt the man spit on him. He lay, he lay until the man stumbled away into the night. Man. Man. Things, things in Haiti are just heating up. That's all I just gotta say. Yep, violence has reached a hundred per violence has reached a crescendo of a hundred percent. Hmm. Oh, oh, the Madras president. Not bad for a light, lightish red guy. Nice. That's cool. Woohoo! Hail to the chief, baby! Our great country stands today as a union that is not truly uni truly united. This great discord from which serves this great threat of the spirit of America, not any army of statesmen or ideology from without. If we here if we are to stand as the greatest country in the world has ever seen, we must come together as, a pe as one people. For the pre for President Lincoln once said, "A house divided against itself cannot stand." 
Ah, yes. The inauguration of Wallace F. Bennett marks the return of an old force in American politics, being the first ever Republican to be president since America's defeat in the war. He has expressed his intent to be a force of moderation and compromise, wishing to pursue the implementation of a civil rights act, albeit with input from, segre from segregationists. He also plans to increase America's global reach through a slew of new diplomatic programs as opposed to the sub subterfuge of employed by his predecessor. His policy of compromise has raised some eyebrows. Segregationists decry his policy is going too far, while civil rights activists argue they do not go far enough. His softer foreign policy has been denounced by the MPP as a sign of weakness. Nonetheless, while some dislike his policies, you can honestly say they actually hate the man himself. And it is this quality that the Republican Democrats hope that will make Bennett the great compromiser America truly needs. Aw oh, yeah, we salute to President Bennett. Hail to the chief, baby. Oh look, it's the Mormon, it's the Mormon man himself, ain't he beautiful? Now, now we finally get to do the Wallace F. Bennett presidency, woohoo! The Bennett presidency, here we come, and we'll see how we'll do, between financial and political necessity. Ah yes, the Bennett, the Mormon, the Mormon man presidency, Wallace F. Bennett, the Mormon man has been elected as the 39th president of the U.S. In these tumultuous times, he has promised to be a force of stability and compromise, refusing to take a hard line on most issues. Instead, he believes that, um, that a careful nuanced approach with input from, either, from both sides of the debate is preferable. He also laid out plans of strengthening America's position, both within and beyond the OFN, with a myriad of economic and diplomatic programs aimed at uniting the plan's remaining bastions, bastion democracies. There are some who argue his policies are weak and that that his compromises will ultimately leave nobody happy. However, with his personal personable nature and willingness for dialogue with anyone, President Bennett might just be what America really needs at the moment of history. This will unlock Bennett's ability to work with all the people of America. Ah yes. Ah yes, the Mormon man inaugurated as president. In a surprise turn of events, Republican, the Republican Party, thought to have been politically ruined by Nixon, was, was crashed back into power. Wallace, Wa Wallace Mormon Man Bennett of the Republican Democrats today won a narrow victory against the MPP Progressive, Progressive Pact to become President of the United States. Bennett utilized his acceptance speech to call on the bitterly divided America to join together as one nation to face down the struggles of the day. A mild-mannered and average and adverse to political extremes, Bennett believed that a middle ground between both sides of a civil rights debate is possible. He also promised to expand America's diplomatic and economic outreach with fellow OFM partners and other neutral nations, breaking from the cloak-and-dagger approach of the Nixon administration. For a, to a prosperous future indeed. Nice. I love it. Oh, we can. Oh, chaos in the Horn of Africa. One fire, fi one fire fights one fire. One nail, one nail. Oh, we also have a new CIA director, Lawrence E. Bunker. Huh. Wow. That. Huh. I guess. I guess. I guess we had to get Alan Dulles to quit, huh? Oh well. Ooh, strength. Let's see, strengthen the reform movement in Germany. Oh, a message from lame duck McCormick to his successor. Mr. Bennett, as I have served in various capacities in the U.S. Congress over many years past, I have a great fortune of telling, of greeting many bright and understanding public servants. I count you among those distinguished few. Though we never served in the same chamber, your reputation as a stalwart internationalist and defender of American values was well known throughout both chambers of Congress. Many in the leadership consider you a, par a paragon of stability and a man dedicated to upholding the traditions of the Senate. While there are many matters of policy that we do not agree on, I hope you will continue to serve with decency and dignity over your next few years in the White House. These qualities will be essential if America is to live up to the promise of its founding documents and serve as a leader to the larger world. Already, many have grown disillusioned and alienated with our society. I fear that we that they will turn against our country, country should the sources of their grievances not be resolved. 
I trust you will work hard to address both these challenges. I wish you the best of luck and welcome you to visit to visit me in Boston should you ever visit. Yours truly, John Lane Duck McCormick. It is read politely, but this but this passionately then filed away for the sake of future generations. Yep, you tell you tell him, Mormon man. Now let's get now now after once we do we'll get back to doing some real business. Haha. <laughs> On on das radio. Oh shoot! Things be going down. Things be going down in. Things be going down in the Horn of Africa, huh? Uh, let's see. Let's see. We could. I, I could try and propose economic aid. That, well, we'll try and. Increase um, stability by at least three percent. Oh wait, hang on, hang on. Ah, here we go. Got to keep recruiting new recruits. CIA begins training new operatives and our research and development. The belly buster. I don't know what's so weird about a belly buster thing like that. It's just, it's just weird. Our smoke and mirrors. Appointment of Edmund Muskie. If one were to think of an ideal candidate for Secretary of State, it'd be Edmund Muskie, wouldn't it? He reserved. He's reserved, blunt, and relatively inexperienced in foreign affairs. But with all that said, Muskie has has a lot going for him. If Treasury Secretary Robertson is a reward to President Bennett's conservative backers, then Muskie is olive branch to the liberal wing of the Republican Democrats. As Maine's governor and subsequently senator, he champions civil rights and environmental protections, bringing Maine fully into the 20th century. Depending on who you ask, though, it's either he's either the right man to represent America on the world stage, or a lily-livered prov provincial who can be who's better off sending sending pork back to Portland. As one editor, as one editor put it, sending Muskie against the Germans would be like sending a free-toed sloth out to seize. Tur to seize the turf from a wolverine. But, I guess we'll just have to see how Edmund Muskie does. And yep, as they say, we finally added Edmund Muskie as our uh, Secretary of State. But who will be our economy minister? That's the bigger question. Okay, let's see. Free up ambassador positions. We will appoint the white... Appoint the wife of a prominent political backer to one of our newly appointed positions. Oh, nice. Oh, responsible Republicans support. Nice. Oh. A star rises in Michigan. In the good year of a Republican-Democrat coalition, one strongest performer in the nation was Michigan Governor George Romney. Governor George Romney ran ahead of a part of a party net of a party nationally. Romney's victory largely rested on. On his reputation as a good governor, a, pol a politician who delivered for citizens without inciting rancor and division while living a devout life of the Tito tattler who observed the Sabbath. The formerly deeply divided Michigan RDC found themselves reunited insp and inspired by Romney with his philosophy of civic responsibility and reformist conservatism. After years of stagnation where the RDs had acted like nothing had changed since change in the state since the state, Michigan again seemed to be on the move under Romney's leadership, while his governing style has been, sorry, described as a bull in the china shop, Michiganers certainly appreciate his revision on the tax code in earnest. Hmm. Romney's victory only further harmed position of MPP in the state, locking them out of legislature and governor's mansion for years by the coalition. Their strength in the state has been further reduced by popular Govern, govern and governor and defeat in presidential election. Oh, a Mormon in the White House? Hmm. Well, that's a first. Let's see. We'll free up. We'll free up ambassador positions. Ah, here we go. The appointment of the Stressner sees party in Paraguay. He might be a blank, but he's our blank. Oh, so okay. Dio Vin Dice. Okay, that's just weird. 
but but who am I to but who am I to say that it's kind it's not gonna be that weird though. So we got A. Willis Robertson. Hmm. An independent Democrat normally aligned with the wider area of Democrats that have faded with the rise of the MPP in the South and the salience of the civil rights in the North. Only his relative moderation, long working relationship with Bennett, and cordial relations with the members of, of the August Senate kept his nomination from floundering. Well, well, Mr. Robinson, Robertson, at least you're with the Mormon man's pre Mormon, Mormon man now in it during his presidency. Lifelines of Revolution. Better, the, the Unitary Republic of Indonesia's opposition forces are strengthened. Better to be safe than actually sorry. A defector? Ooh, Emil. Scientists now flock to Africa. The quest for knowledge continues. We will help you. Emil Morse is, our, in our, is in our captivity. Decisions in the Africa tab of intelligence menu have been unlocked. Oh, really? Let me see. Let me see that. Oh, sorry. I always keep forgetting. It's always mainly in the... Uh... Okay, here we go. Operation Knapp. What is this? We will continue our efforts to bring Emil Maurice into America. Okay. And we'll do Operation Concord to keep... Uh... To, to make sure we keep our allies, South Africa safe. All right, we finished up the Bennett, the Bennett presidency. Now get the fire extinguisher. In, in the current age, the name United States of America is almost like a, is almost like a bloody joke, with Americans particularly at each other's throats over a myriad of various issues. Not least the issue of civil rights, we can hardly present a united front to the fascist powers. If we are to restore peace in America, we have to put the fires out. Let's appeal for calm, bring any radicals in government to he to heal to our our demands, and try to and try to calm down an incendiary mood that has been plaguing America for the last few years. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. Or as Mo or as the Mormon man would put it, we have to appeal for calmness on both sides, force the radical force radicals to understand we are not going going to bend to their will and make sure we have a fire extinguisher in case for any damages that could come. I mean, hey, more, more, we're not going to be the fire brand, pre we're not going to be the fire president for nothing. Oh, yes, I, oh, yes, and I will, and I will say, but I do love this mechanic. Wallace, do not rock the boat, Bennett, Bennett event and decisions. Maintaining our relationship with the different peoples of America ain't no small task. Wallace Mormon Man Bennett campaigned on a promise to not rock the boat. And dare no sails be caught in the wind. The lower our relationship with um with our group to be, the more likely people will start to defect to the MPP. The higher our relationship, all the easier it will be to swing voters to our side. Play our cards to play our to pl play your cards carefully though, Bent. As Bennett, for every concession we will make to one, will will bother the other. Every year, our relationship to each voter base will be put to the test, but, but also followed by major decisions in the national focus tree. So our American businesses are very high, 80%. This will affect our GDP growth. Foreign businesses is a bit middling, 60. This will affect our oath and unity and interest rate. Church of Latter Day Church of Latter Day Saints is 100. This will pr affect our strength in Mormon majority areas. Catholic opinion is middling at 60. Dixiecrats have a high opinion of us in 70. And Northern Democrats have a very high... <laughs> they have a very high idea of us, like 100. Okay, so... Let's see. I'll focus with the foreign businesses. Since... Let's see. Ah, here we go. We will, relate, we will raise our relationship with foreign businesses. We will let's see advocate for oh uh, here we go labor democrats will support by five percent advocate for coalition unity hmm. this 
this will lower our relationship with the Dixiecrats, but no, I'm not really gonna actually have a Dixiecrats, like, lower. Yeah, even accepting refugees will... The Dixiecrats will not like that. End of a line. He would find none. Wow. Emil looked up at his killer and begged and began to beg for forgiveness. Wow. Gosh darn, I think we lost him. Darn it, I think we lost him. Or something. Yeah, I think we definitely lost him. Ease the fears of American business. We will raise our relationship with American business. Voter, rural voters will be more conservative on economic policy. La Bahadur Shastiri becomes ROI Prime Minister. Si vis passum parabellum. Okay, that's just weird, but alright. Okay, let's see, which else should we do? It's a choice, not an echo. Surprisingly popular despite its conspiratorial tone. Okay. Okay, let's see here. We'll send in... Oh. Oh, wait, what the heck? Holy... Oh my god, now we gotta contend with the Indonesian Civil War. Okay, vi okay, this just adds a further more crazy craziness to everything. Let's see, just deploy the mech. Civil War in Indonesia, we must strike while the iron is hot, boys. Yep. The Indonesian War. We prefer... We prefer independence with poverty to servitude with plenty. Seku Tori. Yep. And I like how this alternate civil war is basically not just between Sukarno and Mohamed Hatta or so, but it actually introduces different factions on both sides working together. So, uh, that's something. The Pacific is now alight. Yep. And it's the, and with um and with our friend Razak on the side as an OFN observer, this could give us a bit of a good chance. The Indonesian conundrum. Yeah, this one's gonna be a tough one. I think you should tell me tell me what the president deci decides. Let's see. Hmm. Turn up the heat or let it sit. And they're saying the United States simply can't leave it all up to them or or the Japanese take their entire region back. Wow. They wanted to see Sukarno fella out as so much as we wanted to see Hutchig dead. And they're saying the United States simply cannot l leave it up to them or the Japanese. You know what? Let's turn up the heat. Yep, that's exactly what we'll do. Decrease discont. Let's see. We'll let's see. Ah, here we go. We'll do that first. Let's see. Watch. Ah, now we're going on the radio. We need people to be on our side, but they re won't respond well to a plea of unity from a faceless government body. To this end. To this end, President Bennett has come with a splendid idea. Indonesia burns, as said by Gene Kirkpatrick. The hammer hits the anvil. To end, President Bennett came up with a splendid idea. We shall speak to the people directly. He is clearly popular enough given that the people voted for him. We have requested some time slots with national radio stations, which, pre which the President may engage in some fireside chats, where he will present his case for a truly united America in a casual, reasonable manner. 
President Bennett will not just be leader of America, Amer of the American people, but also their good friend. Na Ooh, nativists, rural, and urban voters will all support the Republican Party within a span of two weeks, and will get free and will get a free plus percent stability. Ooh, ooh man, things are get and things are getting warm in here. But first, I really feel like I really need to get more command power. I don't know why. It's just weird. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, that's not... Okay, here we go. There we go. I need all the manpower I can get. I just can't keep... Okay, let's see here. Loans for democracy. This will increase liquid reserves. Let's see. Ooh, conflict... Let's make sure that the conflict doesn't escalate too much. Escalation, ah, uh, here we go. Oh, escalation, let's see where I can decrease. With, no, we're not gonna, against Sokarno's tyranny. Wow, this one, wow, this one's gonna be a bit of a mix of a tough one. The ugly request. The young man gestured to him in the doorway with a sign, with a sigh. The ugly American just followed. Expand peacekeeping in the, Cong in the Congo. Oh, unifies West Siberia. A new candidate for Russian dominance seems to appear. Let's see. Against Sokarno tyranny, prioritize. It's always that the escalation will always increase somehow. America isn't going away, you can be sure of that. We're not going away. But if we can actually get the discontent to decrease... Slamming on the brakes. Remember, slow and steady always wins the race. Remember that. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Commit commit a lot more troops. Okay, 66%. That gives me a bit more time to actually, uh, let's see. Catholic opinion with us is middling. Foreign, ease fears of foreign businesses. Dixiecrats, let's see. Concessions to Dixiecrats and conservative Republicans. There we go. We shall appeal to our Mormon fellows. This will raise our relationship with the Latter-day Saints. Let's see, raise foreign... Okay, ours is very high, let's see. Raise Catholic American... This will help, help us with Catholic Americans with the assurance of separation of the church and the state. Denounce civil rights protests. Wow. This will slightly decrease public meetings and policy effectiveness. This will raise our relationship with the Dixiecrats, but this will lower our relationship with the Northern Democrats, meaning the Dixiecrats will increase will increase support by five. Nativist voters will support Republican, and more people will tend more conservative on the issue of civil rights. Okay, that's something to keep in mind, at least. No, let's see, withdraw from the... Withdraw recognition for the NKRI. Hmm. A military coup in Cambodia? Well, at least it w Well, at least the coup was bloodless and no one was killed. That's all that matters, doesn't it? Okay, let's... <laughs> All right, now that we're on the radio, we're going to maintain the status quo, baby. Now that we're in power, we, we firmly have to put our foot down against those who seek radical change in the system. The American government has been a bedrock of stability since 1776. Any necessary changes have to be made perfectly well with due process and gradualism. Radicals who believe that our system needs to turn upside down only need to look at Germany and Japan to see the inevitable outcome of such sudden change. 
We will keep the government going as it always has. The ugly consequences. When he returned with the GIs, all he found were scattered papers and his empty wallet. Wow, that is deep. And ensure that the moderations of the RDs always hold the balance of power. Rural voters, rural voters will tend to support Republican within two weeks. Well, the span of two weeks. OFN unity is high, baby. We're really united. Let's see. Keep assuring separation of church and state. Appeal to Mormons. Let's see. Raise. Okay, appeal with foreign businesses. Yep, durable, terrific. Oh, ha faction health of the health of the Democrats is poor. Dixiecrats are poor vote. Hold a responsible White House meeting. Grant favorable committee assignments. We're only gonna do this a bit. We're only gonna do this a bit so that we don't, you know. Strong, lofty, waning, durable, terrific, terrific. Okay. Let's see. Rate this will lower our relationship with Dixiecrats. Hmm. This will be a controversy if we invite the Pope. And will for two weeks an impact coalition unity by a negative five percent. Hardline Republicans and Ooh! Siano liberalize the Empire! The democracy shines in the Mediterranean once more. Let's see, we'll ease we'll ease the fear of American businessmen and keep um Dixiecrats, hardline Repu Dixiecrats, hardline Republicans, and so we'll really love this. Alright. Violence has already reached a crescendo of a hundred percent in this case, so uh, yeah. The African Quagmire. Coordinate with, let's see, Australian patrols. Escalation will increase, let's see. Man, escalation always increases, but really, but like the discontent doesn't increase, doesn't, doesn't in decrease. That's just funny. That's just crazy. I don't get it. But regardless. Wait, hang on. Let me just, uh. Okay, there we go. Anyway, we'll end this day for the for the for within the first months of Wallace F. Bennett's presidency on the 10th of May, 1965. So as you can see, now we also have to deal with the Indonesian Civil War while I'm still trying to get the stability of the Central African Republic in check and Haiti's violence in check with check and supporting the opposition government. So, but but with but with everything with with all that we're doing with the Bennett tree, we're actually doing pretty good. And I know that there's going to be like 1965 military po policy out outlook, so I might also do that tree as well. But regardless of the fact, our Mormon man will keep America stable and not rock the boat and will assure and I'll assure that man will do his job right. Anyway, Hope you Latter-day Saints people, Catholics, and everyone else in the country or so enjoy this video as well as well everyone else worldwide, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.